Thanks for joining us on the CBN News Channel. I'm Charlene Israel. And I'm Heather Sells. Jerusalem police are on high alert today following a terrorist bombing that jolted the city. An Israeli airship struck tunnels used to smuggle weapons on the Gaza-Egypt border. CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell has that story. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pledged Israel would act vigorously, responsibly, and prudently preserve the quiet and security that existed here the last two years. Netanyahu spoke after an explosive device packed with shrapnel went off near a busy Jerusalem city bus stop, killing one woman and wounding more than 40 others. This is the kiosk where Wednesday's bombing took place. Ironically, in Hebrew, it's called the blast of a kiosk because a bomb exploded here in 1994. Yesterday, the man running the kiosk saw a suspicious package under this public phone booth when the bomb exploded. I went closer to see what happened, and I saw this phone booth on fire, and people here on the ground, I don't know, scared. Many Jerusalemites felt they were catapulted back a number of years when terrorist bombings rocked the city on a regular basis. I very much hope we won't return to those terrible years. I hope the government will do what it needs to do to give people security. Netanyahu met with Defense Minister Ehud Barak and other top security officials just before leaving on a pre-planned trip to Russia. According to reports, they drew up what is widely expected to be a considerable military response. Police spokesman Mickey Rosenfeld said the search for the terrorist is continuing. Since yesterday's attack, we've heightened security in Jerusalem, as well as in the southern part of Israel, in order to prevent any further attacks from taking place. Palestinian Authority leaders were quick to condemn the attack. No group has claimed responsibility, but Islamic Jihad vowed earlier this week to avenge a series of Israeli airstrikes in Gaza mounted in response to stepped-up rocket and mortar fire on Israeli communities. Overnight, Israel targeted a smuggling tunnel and terror activity site in Gaza. Since the weekend, more than 25 rockets and mortars have hit Israel, including four ground rockets which hit major cities. In the meantime, for the people of Jerusalem, life is beginning to return to normal even at the scene of Israel's latest terror attack. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. NATO ships are patrolling off Libya's coast this morning after U.S.-led coalition forces carried out another night of airstrikes over Tripoli. President Obama is meeting with his national security team on Libya today. He says the U.S. will reduce its involvement to a support role within days. But Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says the no-fly zone has been a success. I know that uh, the nightly news cannot cover a humanitarian crisis that thankfully uh, did not happen. But it is important to remember that uh, many, many Libyans are safer today because the international community took action. President Obama is facing new pressures from Congress over the U.S. role in Libya amidst concerns about the mounting costs. Republicans are now calling for congressional hearings. Republicans are criticizing the Obama administration for its budget proposals. A new estimate from the Congressional Budget Office says the White House has underestimated future deficits by more than $2 trillion over 10 years. The report also found that the, president, but the president's budget increases this year's deficit by another $26 billion. Congressional Republicans say the report shows that the president is not serious about cutting spending. Relief workers are handing out bottled water to families in Tokyo. That's after news that radioactive iodine in the city's tap water had reached levels unsafe for babies. Families with infants are receiving three bottles for each baby. New tests show levels in Tokyo are now safe, but still high in surrounding areas. City officials are begging people not to hoard bottled water because it's needed for victims in the quake zone. Some 666,000 households in northeast Japan still do not have water. Meanwhile, workers are back inside that damaged nuclear plant after black smoke forced an evacuation. Spring is having a hard time getting a grip on much of the country this week. A far-reaching storm has brought up to a foot of snow from the Dakotas to Michigan to upstate New York. In other regions, the storm brought golf ball-sized hail and tornadoes. 
In Wisconsin, drivers have been contending with a volatile mix of snow and freezing rain, leading to multiple car crashes and spinouts. It's tough driving even for the pros. Everybody thinks because you're driving this truck, you, got, uh, you can stop on a dime. It's just the opposite. There's just really no traction. Sleep like this, do it, and everything. It just changed it real fast. In southern Iowa, the storm has brought major damage. It knocked down outbuildings and trees and killed or injured livestock. There's been dozens of tornado warnings in Iowa and Nebraska. The National Weather Service isn't sure yet just how many touched down. And a likely tornado ripped through western Pennsylvania, tearing apart a housing complex and tossing debris over a wide area. It destroyed homes and took a part of the roof of the high school. Today, major cleanup is expected. All I saw was just stuff flying everywhere. And I'm in my mobile home at the time, and I was scared to death. And with my wife and kids, scared to death. Late Wednesday, two tornadoes were also spotted north of Sacramento, California, but minimal damage is reported. Some Christian groups are upset with Apple because the company pulled an app created by Exodus International. Now, that's the Christian ministry which helps people struggling with homosexuality. In a written statement, Apple told CBN News the Exodus app, quote, violates our developer guidelines by being offensive to large groups of people. The president of Exodus says he is disappointed with Apple's decision to deny equal representation in the public square. We go now to Craig Parshall with the NRB National Religious Broadcasters for his insights on the situation. Craig, Apple's decision, of course, just involves one app, but what do you think is really at stake here? It's a little stunning. You'd expect this kind of iron-fisted censorship in a country like Iran or China, but not on the American shores. But this isn't the first time Apple has done this, remember. Uh, they banned the Manhattan Declaration app back in November of last year because of its biblical view of marriage. And now they've put their sights on Exodus International, again on a homosexual issue. And the biblical view of uh, uh, homosexuality was just too much for Apple. Once again, it's a bigger picture. You know, when these new media technology companies decide that they're going to pick and choose what opinions they'll allow on their platforms, that uh, has dire consequences. Yeah, what kind of consequences do you see coming from this decision? Well, I think uh, Christians in particular have to be aware that, uh, you know, this wonderful Internet platform that all these new media companies are using uh, is something that ought to be available for all of us. You know, it's a, a universal platform. It ought to be universally applicable to all viewpoints and all comers. I'm a little surprised that Apple would have caved into these pressure groups that call themselves tolerant, but terribly intolerant when it comes to Christian orthodoxy. Well, Craig, are you saying that you think Apple should have no restrictions whatsoever, or are you just saying you'd like them to broaden their, their view of the universe, so to speak? They don't allow uh, any otherwise lawful viewpoints on their platforms. There's plenty of stuff out there that shouldn't be allowed, uh, indecency, obscenity, child pornography, cyber stalking. We could all list the things that are criminal and unlawful that shouldn't be allowed. But all other viewpoints, we think, ought to have an equal booth in the marketplace. Craig, where do you think that Apple is going to go from here? Do you think other apps that support biblical views, say biblical views on homosexuality, are going to be at risk? Well, what we're concerned about is, uh, let's say, uh, a cult group doesn't like what a Christian uh, apologetics ministry has to say about their theology. Are they going to mount uh, a, uh, an anti-Christian program and force that app off of Apple or off of some new media technology uh, platform? If the atheists start mounting a, a lobbying effort to get applications off the iPhone for Apple, are they going to cave into them? So you, you foresee a ripple effect here with, with other media taking their cues from Apple's decision? We're seeing the, the tendency, the first tip of the spear in these kinds of acts of censorship. We want to nip this in the bud before it becomes a precedent. And what do you think is the best way to nip it in the bud, Craig? Well, this is a complex issue. We don't want the federal government coming in with a heavy hand of regulation. But if these companies don't voluntarily respect the free speech rights of Americans, then we have to consider other options. Other options being resort to the courts, resort to Congress, or perhaps regulatory measures. All right, Craig Parshall with the NRB. Thanks a lot for joining us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The American missionary who spent five months in a Haitian jail says he is grateful for his freedom, but he is ready to return to help the people in the struggling nation. CBN Morning anchor Ephraim Graham traveled to Florida where he spoke with Daniel Pye about his desire to return.
Bradenton, Florida is about 800 miles from Haiti, but a lifetime away from the Haitian jail cell in Jacmel, where missionary Danny Pye spent some five months locked up in a 10 by 12 foot cell with some 28 other inmates. To this day, he still has little clue as to why the judge sent him there and why he was locked up for so long. He is now here home in Bradenton, along with his wife and their newborn son. He arrived just two days before that baby was born, thanks to a little help from the American Center for Law and Justice. But though he's here and he's home and he's safe, he and his family are actually ready to head back to Haiti to be reunited with the orphans he and his wife have adopted. We, we made a promise to 22 kids that we're going to be their mom and dad um, until they're through high school and, and, and ready to be adults. And we don't plan on breaking that promise. We never did. And, and, and we can't. I mean, they, they depend on us. And Danny says his family will be ready to return to Haiti just as soon as baby Joseph has a passport. In Bradenton, Florida, Ephraim Graham, CBN News. Danny Pye spoke with Ephraim at length about his confinement and release. You can see that exclu exclusive interview on the 700 Club and the CBN News Channel in coming days. Coming up, tapping into the heartland why America's own oil supplies could provide more energy security in turbulent times. Have you ever had an idea for an invention or new product? Bill Schaefer, one of the inventors of Whammo's new splash wash, did. He came up with the idea while watching his children play one hot summer afternoon. Bill invented a car wash for kids. Ride through it, run through it. And Ben Help submitted the splash wash to Whammo, the makers of childhood favorites like the Frisbee, Hula Hoop, and Slip and Slide. If you have an invention you would like to try to patent and submit to corporations and want free information that explains how InventHelp may be able to assist you, call now. InventHelp is America's largest invention company with sales offices in over 50 cities nationwide. Call InventHelp today for free information. Bill Schaefer made a financial gain on the splash wash. However, most inventions are not successful and Bill's experience is not typical of what inventors can expect. For your free inventor's information, Call 1-800-260-7793. That's 1-800-260-7793. I've fallen and I can't get up. I need help. When you are home alone and have a bad fall where you cannot move, you are stuck in a very limited area. If you cannot reach a phone, you may lay helpless on the floor for hours or days, which can result in permanent incapacitation or death. This waterproof pendant is my magic wand to some of the paramedics, fire department, police, or my doctor. It contacts Life Alert. When you have a heart attack like I did, and there's no one there, Life Alert was there for me. I couldn't handle the alternative of going to a nursing home. Thanks to Life Alert, you can live alone without ever being alone. And that's why I wear one. New Life Alert Classic for Seniors or Life Alert 50 Plus. Please call 1-800-586-0025 for a free brochure about Life Alert. That's 1-800-586-0025. Call us toll-free now at 1-800-586-0025. That number again, 1-800-586-0025. The ongoing turmoil in Libya is keeping oil prices high, climbing above $106 a barrel today. That's having an impact on gas prices here in the U.S. In some parts of the country, it's topping $4 a gallon. Filling the cart at the grocery store is also more expensive. Food prices rose nearly 4% last month. That is the biggest leap in 36 years. Severe weather and crop shortages are the main factors behind the jump. Revolts in the Mideast are just the latest reminder that the U.S. needs to pursue energy independence. One aspect of that could be new sources of oil already being tapped right here in the U.S. Mark Martin has that story. North Dakota's prairies and badlands have a peaceful beauty. But for many, what lies underneath this landscape is the real draw, or real play, as they say in the oil industry. There's uh, a tremendous amount of oil in the Bakken. North Dakota, its neighbor Montana, and a part of Canada are home to what's known as the Bakken Formation, a massive area covering about 200,000 square miles. The United States Geological Survey estimates the American portion holds 3 to 4.3 billion barrels of undiscovered, technically recoverable oil. Unlike conventional wells where the oil collects in a certain area, the oil in the Bakken is spread throughout shale rock, primarily over a large area. These were here before. 
but our knowledge of them is not what it is now. The technology was not here before to develop these. It most definitely is here now. Production in the Bakken jumped 50% in just the past year. Here's the main hole where they're drilling for the oil. This drill pipe here goes two miles down into the ground and then two miles over to extract the oil. It's a technique known as horizontal drilling. Drilling down, then out. The horizontal drilling is opening up vast fields of oil once locked away in rock. That's helping to reverse a two-decade decline in the domestic production of crude. Companies are investing billions of dollars to drill for oil in North Dakota, Colorado, Texas, and California. Oil executives and analysts say in just four years, the new fields could yield as much as two million barrels of oil a day, more than the entire Gulf of Mexico produces now. And for North Dakota, that's great news for the state's economy. What's happening here is so different than what's happening in the rest of the nation. I mean, we have rising property values. We have low unemployment. Unemployment in North Dakota has dropped to the lowest level in the nation, 3.8 percent. That's far less than half the national rate. Right now, the state has a budget surplus, and a lot of it's due to the oil uh, activity in western North Dakota. At a time when states face massive budget deficits, the shale oil boom has handed North Dakota a $1 billion budget surplus. And the hope is that increasing our domestic supply of oil will benefit the entire nation by bringing gas prices down and reducing our dependence on foreign oil. Our appetite for energy is so big that it takes a lot of pieces to meet that need. But it's a step in the right direction. Sure. Sure, if it's developed and all of the environmental concerns are addressed. Environmentalists are concerned that fluids or wastewater from the hydraulic fracturing, a process used to remove the oil from the shale, could pollute drinking water. The Environmental Protection Agency is investigating. But those concerns aside, the big oil fields here could help the U.S. cut its dependence on foreign sources by as much as half within 10 years. Mark Martin, CBN News, Dickinson, North Dakota. Up next, a high school that's making headlines for making babies. How Memphis is responding after 90 students became pregnant in one school. Starting a garden doesn't have to be backbreaking. Not when you have the Mantis Tiller Cultivator. It does all the hard work for you. The Mantis Tiller weighs about 20 pounds. It's easy for anyone to handle. Three convenient power options spin the patented tines deep into the soil. They dig down, cutting through the hardest clay and tangled weeds. They're so tough, they're actually guaranteed never to break. And on our two-cycle model, Mantis offers the best start engine option. It's our easiest starting two-cycle tiller ever. Tilling, weeding, and cultivating have never been easier. And now you can get this amazing Mantis Tiller Cultivator at huge savings. Order now, and we include a kickstand accessory, this border edger attachment, and free shipping. Use the Mantis for a full year, and if you're not delighted, return it for a prompt, no questions asked refund. Call 1-800-707-2105 today for a free DVD and information kit. That's 1-800-707-2105. Attention those on Medicare with diabetes. You may be eligible for an upgraded meter. If you're tired of stabbing your fingertips to test your blood glucose, we have news that could change your life. If you're on Medicare with diabetes, then you need to know there's an alternative method for checking your blood glucose every day. You don't need to stab your fingertips anymore. The Embrace Meter from Diabetes Care Club is easier to use and nearly painless. And the best news is that Diabetes Care Club would love to send you one of these meters. This method hurts less, and because you can see and hear your results, it may be easier to understand. Your blood glucose reading is 89. Call now to find out why nearly a quarter of a million patients have joined Diabetes Care Club. Membership is free. So is the call. Call 1-800-833-8011. Talk to Diabetes Care Club. You'll be glad you did. There is a new link between marijuana and mental illness. Reuters reports that Dutch scientists found marijuana use nearly doubled the risk of developing psychotic disorders later in life. Just last year, a study found young people who smoked pot for six years or more were twice as likely to have psychotic episodes, hallucinations or delusions. 
The latest study followed nearly 2,000 young people for 10 years. The results were published in the British Medical Journal. The teen pregnancy rate in Memphis, Tennessee, is nearly twice the national average. As Ephraim Graham reports, that crisis has politicians turning to church leaders for answers. Memphis, Tennessee is known for the blues, barbecue, and Beale Street. But its latest buzz is babies having babies. 90 Fraser High School students are currently pregnant or gave birth already. It's a number that shocked our newsroom. Much of the focus is here at Fraser, a high school in the struggling Fraser community, where 20% of female students are pregnant or have already had a baby. Some girls try to do it because they think it's cute. Some be an accident. I never thought I was going to get pregnant. I never thought that. I was like, oh, like, oops. <laughs> 90 pregnancies at one Memphis high school made the city front page news across the nation for several days. But it wasn't news at all for those who actually live here. It was just the latest reminder of an old reality. Others were just finally seeing it. I think people should not have been shocked. Dr. Kenneth Robinson is Tennessee's former commissioner of health and a Memphis pastor. We are a predominantly African-American city. Uh, the teenage pregnancy rates are twice as high for African-American teenagers as they are for their white uh, counterparts. Uh, this is not news for us in Memphis Shelby County. What is new is the half million dollar media campaign encouraging girls to say no to sex. And beyond the billboards, city and church leaders are working together on the next step. We want to protect them from unsafe sex and the sexually transmitted diseases and pregnancy. So we have to talk about, even in the faith community, family planning and appropriate applied approaches in communities such as ours when young people don't make the first choice we want them to make. This community has a lot of issues, a lot of issues, a lot of gang issues, uh, a lot of teenage pregnancy issues. Marin Thomas heads up a Christian community center that has been working with Frazier's young people for more than a dozen years. Its mission, train girls and boys to be Christian leaders who say no to gangs, drugs and sex. They're saying no because my body is the temple of the Lord and we're saying no because we love Jesus Christ. So we want to get our hands on more of our kids so we can teach them what to say yes to. Thomas's center is called Youth Visions with good reason. Letting them see something different and if they see something different, a lot of times we've seen our kids become something different. Showing teenage girls something different is why this busy mom is helping tackle the city's teen pregnancy problem. God gave me this story and I have to share it. You know, there are a lot of girls who are dealing with the same thing or worse. Summer Owens was pregnant her sophomore year of high school. She was raped by someone who was visiting her cousin's home. It was Summer's 15th birthday. We started fooling around just a little bit and he took it further. And when I asked him to stop and I tried to push him off of me, he wouldn't. Um, and it was over before I knew it. And then I, four weeks later, found out that I was pregnant. It was a shock that had the 15-year-old contemplating an abortion. She shares her emotional story in a new book, Life After Birth, a memoir of survival and success as a teenage mother. It's like, I can't. I'm, I'm the good girl. I want to go to college. I want to get married. I want to have a family. That way I want to do everything right. This is messing up my perfect little picture. I can't do this. Um, I really did. I, I, at that time, I thought that that was the answer. I was tormented. Um, and my heart and my faith didn't agree with abortion. Today, Summer is a successful marketing executive who beat the odds. She graduated from high school, college, and business school with honors while raising her now 16-year-old son on her own. I love him to death, and he knows I do, and I wouldn't trade him for the world, but I would be much more grateful to have had a husband and then him and had my family, you know, as God intended it. The Memphis school system is putting Summer's book in the hands of students in hopes it will inspire them to make wise choices. I show them just as being, you know, a living, breathing example that it's possible. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Memphis, Tennessee.
Hats off to her. Wow, it's a great story. It really is. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Millions of women worldwide love Bare Minerals. This is smooth, it's nice, and it covers. I like that. Only Bare Minerals looks like beautiful bare skin while it covers whatever you want it to. And now you can get our latest kit with our totally new, totally spill-proof Click Lock Go Foundation for over 75% off retail. Our new kit comes with Bare Minerals Foundation in the shade that's just right for you. Warmth for a healthy glow. Mineral Veil, the ultimate finishing touch, and Bare Minerals Flawless Application Brush. Call now and get three full-size gifts worth $57.95 free. Purchase separately, you'd spend over $120. Our original Get Started Kit was a great deal at two payments of $29.99. But now you can get all this for just one payment of $29.99. Save over $90 and get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-800-376-4174. Ask how you can receive this handy compact. Call 1-800-376-4174 now. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now for a new pain-free meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Call now and Areva Medical will send you one of these new meters for free. And if you have Medicare, your testing supplies may also be covered. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. With these new meters, there's no coding. You don't have to prick your fingers. And some of these meters even talk. Your blood glucose reading is 122. And if you call 1-800-284-9762, we will send you a free Betty Crocker Diabetes Cookbook filled with delicious recipes. Call Areva today. You'd be glad you did. Finally today, a 12-year-old boy in New Jersey is being called a hero after saving his mother's life. He says he simply used the skills he learned in health class. Ramin Ashegi was at home with his family when his mother started choking on almonds. His grandmother and younger sister started to panic, but Ramin stayed calm. I went to my mom and I saw she was like gesturing me to help her. I just did what I had to do. I would do it a million times again if I could. I could hear them in the background, but not clearly, and I just knew that it's, I'm just losing it. Amazingly, Ramin had learned the Heimlich just that morning in his health class. Only nine hours after practicing the technique, he was able to do it perfectly. His health teacher says that some of her colleagues questioned whether sixth graders were too young to learn the Heimlich. I think if I didn't learn it, I could have done it, but not as well as I did. Ramin was the only one that got his act together, and I'm very proud of him for that. He really did an amazing job. He did everything by himself. It does seem like there was divine intervention in some way. Ramin says he would like to be a brain surgeon when he grows up because he likes to help people. And he obviously has the presence of mind to Thank perform you. in the heat of the moment. You're a great doctor. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all for this hour of the CBN News Channel. We hope you'll join us next time. Have a great day. Have you ever had an idea for an invention or new product? Bill Schaefer, one of the inventors of Whammo's new Splash Wash, did. He came up with the idea while watching his children play one hot summer afternoon. Bill invented a car wash for kids. Ride through it, run through it. And Ben helped submitted the Splash Wash to Whammo, the makers of childhood favorites like the Frisbee, Hula Hoop, and Slip and Slide. If you have an invention you would like to try to patent and submit to corporations and want free information that explains how InventHelp may be able to assist you, call now. InventHelp is America's largest invention company with sales offices in over 50 cities nationwide. Call InventHelp today for free information. Bill Schaefer made a financial gain on the splash wash. However, most inventions are not successful and Bill's experience is not typical of what inventors can expect. For your free inventors information, Call 1-800-260-7793. That's 1-800-260-7793. Finding video on CBN.com just got easier. We've taken all our video. The 700 Club. News. Testimonies. Teachings. Plus our 24-7 channels. And put them in one convenient location. CBN TV. Watch what you want, when you want.
It's all simple to find. And now, easier than ever to email a story to a friend. CBN TV on CBN.com.